Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I'm Pastor Roger Schaum of Christ Lutheran Church, Yuma Lutheran School, and it's my pleasure and my joy to be with you, God's people, in the sanctuary of Grace Lutheran Church in downtown El Centro, and also to be with all of those in our radio audience that might be listening today. I have a question for you, if you were able, would you like to travel? Would you like to see new things and meet new people and eat new kinds of food? My wife loves to travel. I'd rather stay home and play golf. So you see, I let her do all the planning all the choosing. She decides where we're going to go, what we're going to see, how we're going to get there, where we're going to stay, and how we're going to get back. I have a feeling that's how it was with the disciples and Jesus. He was in charge. When he said go, they went. When he said come, they came. When he said we're going to the beach, they went to the beach. When he said Let's go up on the mountain. They went up on the mountain. I remember the last time that my wife and I went on a vacation. We were there for about a week, and, and she turned to me and she said, Well, I've seen everything that I want to see. Now it's your turn. We'll go see what you want to see. And I, I'll tell you, I n will never forget the feeling. And I had this internal dialogue. The key word was internal dialogue. I said, what do you mean, go see what I want to see? I didn't plan to go see anything. I don't know where to go, what to do, what to see. One thing I knew, to, we could go home. That must have been how the disciples felt on that first Easter evening. They saw their Lord crucified on the cross of Calvary, dead and buried. And then on that first Easter morning, his body was missing, and they're behind locked doors for fear of their lives. Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? I think Peter kind of fell into mode like me because it says in Scripture, he said, I'm going fishing. That was his way of dealing with it. Do you have something that's very precious to you? I'm not talking about people now. I'm not talking about your kids or your wife. Some item that Maybe you purchased somewhere and it has a special story that you like to tell. Maybe it's something somebody gave you or something you inherited. Well, we all have something like that. Even the kids have something like that that's just so special to them. I have something special that I'm wearing today. It's this cross that I'm wearing around my neck. Now, I have lots of crosses as a clergy person. They all have stories, but this one is particularly unique. And I don't normally wear it outside on my robes. But I wear it inside. And the cross sits in the left-hand pocket of my clergy shirt over my heart. And all that the cross means is very, very important to me. But why this particular cross is important is because it was my mother's. And because I was the only clergy person in the family, when she died, it was just understood that I was going to inherit it. But I have one sister, and, and when my mom died, my dad had passed away uh, several years before. Uh, we went through the house, and there were things that we had n to negotiate over because uh, they were things that reminded us of our parents. They were 
things that we grew up with. They were things that we knew the story about. So each of us would like to have those things. But there were many, many other things in the house that probably were worth much more materially because they were things that my parents had bought later in life after we had left home or people had given them. But you see, we didn't know the story behind those things. And so they all got relegated to the neighbor's garage sale. And I can remember how much I wished that my mom or dad could come back that day and, and tell us a story behind these things because I just had it, this picture in my mind. As the saying goes, I could see my mother turning over in her grave as somebody paid 25 cents for her prized piece of china. Well, I'm sure that that must have been the way it was on this first Easter evening. The disciples, I'm sure, were praying that Jesus would come back. That it wasn't that his body was stolen, that, that somehow he would come back and, and, and they'd have a leader again. And we know from today's gospel lesson that their prayer was answered. He did come back. They were behind locked doors for the fear of their lives. And suddenly, in the midst of them, was standing Jesus. And he says, Urene, Umen, peace be with you. And how they needed to hear that. How they needed to experience once again that peace of God, which was beyond all human understanding. You know what I'm saying. For how often have we been locked behind the doors of fear and anxiety and wishing and praying and hoping that somehow we could be rescued from this feeling that has us trapped. That we could be released from this situation that got us there in the first place. And then almost just as miraculously as Jesus' appearance to his disciples behind locked doors, we hear that still small voice in our own experience. Orene umen, peace be with you. And when we realize that God's talking to us and he's telling us, you know, I'm in control. Let it go. Our whole world changes, doesn't it? Some people would call that a conversion experience, but I, I'm here to tell you, and uh, all of you know, that happens to God's children all the time. Well, Jesus had to establish that he was physically there. That it wasn't a ghost. It wasn't an apparition. He let the disciples touch him. He ate something. But it was just beyond belief. It was hard to believe that, that Jesus, whom they saw die on the cross, was actually standing there. Luke says that they, they didn't believe because they were overcome with such joy and amazement. And so after our Lord established that he was truly risen from the dead, he was there present in body, not an apparition, not a ghost, not a mirage. He told them what they needed to hear. The old, old story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. And then he went on to say, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. And then he opened their minds so that they could understand the 
the scripture. He was telling them once again, <laughs> pardon me, he was telling them once again that this new covenant which was being established in his name didn't mean a new God. It was the same God as the old covenant under which they were raised and under which they were taught. The God who had such love for the crown of his creation that from the very beginning he wanted to rescue man from himself. And he had promised such a Savior, and that Savior was Jesus. And now, crucified, died, buried, risen again. Christ is risen, and all God's people say even today, he's risen indeed. Hallelujah. And so he told them, don't feel lost. You know what to do. And I'm going to tell you again, you're to start here in Jerusalem, and you are to tell the story. You are to preach repentance and forgiveness in my name. And then not only in Jerusalem, but into all the world. And so that's the story that we still hear today. That's the story that the boys and girls and I talked about up here in front. The story of God's love in Jesus Christ. And he has formed each and every one of you by the power of the Holy Spirit to be a link in that chain of salvation. And he gives us the opportunity then to forge another link in our children and our grandchildren and in our neighbors and in our friends so that the never-ending story will be never-ending. You see, every day that he gives us is another day of show and tell. To show God's love to others and to tell of that love in his Son, Jesus Christ. John has a parallel to this gospel lesson from Luke. And in his parallel, he says, I'm sharing what I saw and witnessed on this night that your joy might be complete that you might walk in the light as he is in the light. And so today again, our Heavenly Father asks you for Jesus' sake to walk the walk and at the same time talk the talk. To God be the glory forever and ever.